Yeah, you read that right. This isn't just gonna be a how-to, so buckle up. Here's an explanation of the why, because sometimes that's important. I like animals. And being that I'm a humble servant for chickens, cats, dogs, and raccoons, let me tell you something about cats. Cats are difficult. They don't always want to associate with you, kind of like that girl that you liked in high school. Oh, that, that's still a deep cut, isn't it? My apologies. See, I have access to an emotional support wolf that's always nearby. Even participated throughout the entire time that I crafted a Sprinter van home on wheels. You like this? You wanna give it the sniff test? You gonna pee on that? Don't do it. Oh, that's just what doggos do. But cats? 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 They'll give you a brush, but it's generally a polite reminder to just be fed. Or for like five seconds of affection. They may hang out with you, but it's temporary. I suppose most things in life are. Anyways, I notice that when I sit and enjoy television, the cats are nowhere to be found. They prefer a room with a view of the chickens or the raccoons. So I'm gonna cater to them. It's one thing to have a television or a console on the wall, and we've discussed this. The surroundings matter. In good design, a space should have its features integrated. And since I'm oddly motivated to do so, and in an effort to continue to dwindle down a very large pile of wood that I still have from various projects, I'm gonna turn this into this. Here, I'll show you. Badly, but show you nonetheless. Oh, hi, Romulus. Do we get a corporate pizza party on Friday? No? Well, I'll go chop some wood, I guess. Do you have anything to contribute here, sir? All right. Oh, sh they multiplied. Where'd you come from? All right, bye. This is as far as the TV comes off the wall as it stands, but once the slats are in place, we're gonna have it build out to about here, which is an inch off the wall to really give it a clean look. A much tighter uh, feel. Huh? These LEDs through. This is great. captain's log so this is where the wall is at right now got everything ready to throw the slats up that part is left as a void because that is where the shelving is going to take place I should probably finish the rest of this light sequence but anyways look at that yeah that's some lightsaber action right there oh yeah look that hole's still there going to make an access panel for behind the drawer because new england is cold and easy access is important <laughs> I 
up here you can see I've got the first LED strip shining bright like a diamond and light bar on the side. This corner of the room was always dark. Adding all the LEDs will brighten it up and also look neat. Yay. Ah oh, yes, Earth. Look at that. It's round. Huh. Right, Captain's Log building a subwoofer box enclosure here. I'll show you what we're working with. We've got this ball of Christmas lights. Yet to be wired up. Look at this. Look at this disaster. It's just just a mess of lights here. And this is the frame out for the box. So Yeah, look at that. Right. It is coming along over here. Shout out to one of the biggest MVPs here. This little flat plug thing is absolutely fantastic. This little doohickey just plugs on to an outlet, flush, goes right under the slats. And the neat thing about that, can't get the camera to focus, so that's great. Just iPhone things. Buy a new iPhone, that's what they want. So this it just plugs right in the outlet flat so I can move it over to the sub box here and good to go without having to blow a hole in the wall and do the outlet again. Look at that secret squirrel stuff. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Let's throw a slat over it, set it and forget it. You followed all the instructional material, you just set it and forget it. So the lights are in, looking good. Oh, shh. Be cool, be cool. The boss is here. Let's go! Hey, so, so what do you think of all this? Huh? You interested? At all? You know? All right. I'll be back to work. All right. So here now I've placed the access panel for the frostless spigot, and I can remove the shelf simply enough to have that easy access once again because New England is cold and frost-free spigots can still frost in the subarctic when you're trying to deliver water to raccoons and chickens and whatnot, so... Yeah. Anyways, all these boards are over here to give me the proper height for the floating shelf as I mount it. And these are the LEDs that are left over from the lightsaber strip that will go under said floaty. Back at it. Uh, not yet, not yet, not yet. Too soon, too soon. All right, we got a little wood veneer action. A little peekaboo slat piece that's gonna be touching to accent the shelves above. You know, just why not? Why not? And, uh, oh, look at this! Leaping lizards! So whatever that little orphan child said. Oh, we got a turtle head poking out.
And let's load up the LEDs way underneath. Some ASMR. One of the most satisfying things in the universe is peeling this type of stuff off. What isn't satisfying is the necessary amount of plastic, though. Oh. Ooh. Every now and then you have a teachable, humble moment to yourself and say, what did I do? In this particular case, the subwoofer enclosure was slightly off by about mm, three eighths of an inch. I had the slat facing the other way, which I absolutely hated. And it would bother me till who knows when. So I figured to do this to straighten it out and make it proper the way it's supposed to be with the slats carving in the same way. Because if they didn't do that, I would know. I know I gotta paint the inside of that, leave me alone. It's not done. Uh. Did you really think you weren't gonna get a raccoon update? Hi. Yeah. All right, the wall's done, so let's reveal that now. What do you think? Do you have any thoughts or opinions here? Nobody wants to see that. No? Okay, bye. So there's that. There's only so much B-roll of a wall that I can show you. But next week, I started doing something that I've wanted to do for over a decade and finally did. So I'll see you then and I hope you have yourself a lovely day. And don't wait that long to do stuff. Because you could have an oddly specific accident happen to you and warp your life in every way that you know it. Ciao. All this and you'd rather stare out the window. Yeah, I'm waiting for Tina and Rocco too, I get it.